If your goal is to study consistently this year, then this video is for you. Now, I'm not studying anymore, I'm not in high school anymore, but I've become a lifelong learner after high school and I've sort of picked up a few things along the way as an adult that have helped me realize how I could have studied better when I was in high school or in university. And a lot of that comes down to your why. I'm going to be talking about your why through multiple points in this video, so make sure you watch each ones because they all build upon each other. This is something that I don't feel enough people talk about. A lot of people talk about habits and productivity, but they don't talk so much about the the why behind things. So by the end of this video, studying consistently for you shouldn't be as hard as it is. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Lisa. I'm the creator of Lisa Study Guides, duh. But on this channel, we usually talk about English studies, but beyond that, I love to share with you advice that I've learned along the way as an adult. I talk about careers because I quit my career as a pharmacist and turned into an entrepreneur where I have a business, which is this channel and more. So I love to show you the behind the scenes of running a business as well. If these topics interest you, then I encourage you to subscribe. Let's get started. First is identify your why for studying. Are you studying to boost your grades because you enjoy learning or are you studying because your parents expect you to? We've all been there, right? The reason that it's important to find your why is that this will encourage you to study. Often studying for the sake of it may work initially, but eventually you'll get tired, demotivated or distracted, resulting in you being unlikely to actually learn or improve your grades. So think of it this way. Once you know why you're studying, you have a goal you can work towards. You may already know this, but in my previous videos, I've talked about how I used to consider myself a math and science student. And by the time I reached the end of high school, I knew that in order to get into pharmacy, which is what my parents wanted, to get into pharmacy, I needed to be in the top 5% of my cohort in Australia. And so just having that why really drove me to study more consistently. And the amazing benefit that came out of it was I realized that I'd actually just pigeonholed myself into a maths and science category. Whereas I had the potential to be good in English and in the end, I did do well in it. So if you wanted to hear about that story, I'll link it up in the cards for you above. Number two is be a seer. Now you know what you want to achieve out of your studies. But how do you get there? It's important that regardless of when you decide to start regularly studying, you have to know what's coming up in the school year. What will you be learning throughout the year? What assessments do you have for the rest of the year? When are those assessments? Knowing the lineup of assessments naturally forces you to be more consistent, which means that you're looking at the longer, bigger picture view of things, which means that you're more likely to do slow burns rather than heavy studying lifts. And this is a lot better rather than a myopic view of a week to week or even a day to day perspective on things. The slow burn versus heavy lifts is actually something that I learned from Ali Abdur on YouTube and I'll expand on this in my next point. But for this step, just make sure that you are proactive and if your teacher hasn't given you a syllabus for the year, go and ask them so that you can get prepared. Don't just be complacent and wait around for someone to tell you because that might actually just not happen. It's up to you to drive the consistency. And to do that, you wanna have that long-term picture. Three, slow burns versus heavy lifts. A slow burn essentially means that you continuously plug away at a task with moderate effort rather than doing one heavy lift like cramming an entire subject into one night before your exam. Let's revisit your why. If your why is to move from a C grade average in English to B because you wanna get into pharmacy school, then you need to look into the criteria of your next assessment. This is now going from the bigger picture view into the finer details of things. It's important that you balance the bigger picture along with the finer details to achieve that consistency. Ask yourself, what will the assessment entail? Is it a creative, an analytical essay, or an oral presentation? What does your task require you to do? What text is your writing in response to? These are all questions that may arise specifically within English, but you can create these types of questions for any subject. Make a list of the incremental steps the task requires what you know and what you need to learn and do before the assessment. Some tasks may require multiple days and others could easily be accomplished in one sitting. For the ones that require more than one sitting, approach it with the slow burn mentality. 
Think about breaking up each task into small and achievable increments that you can accomplish over time rather than complex, overwhelming, intricate tasks that aren't realistic to complete within the night. Remember what we were saying about slow burns and heavy lifts. The first example is a slow burn and the second example is a heavy lift. I was just thinking about this, but if we extrapolate that analogy a little bit further, if you're somebody who goes to the gym and you go every day, okay, maybe not every day, but let's say four times a week, and that's a slow burn because every day you're pushing yourself a little bit harder, but when it comes to a heavy lift, you maybe you go once a blue moon, but you're more prone to injury, which means that you're probably gonna be less consistent as a result. This is just an analogy I'm thinking off the top of my head, but I'm sure you understand what I mean. So in summary of that analogy, the more difficult the task, the less likely that you're going to get it done. By doing the slow burn, you're making things easier for you. You know, when you go to the gym four times a week, it becomes a habit, it becomes part of your routine. You don't even have to think about it, you just get it done. Have that similar approach and mindset to your studies as well. Now that you know about slow burns and heavy lifts, we're going to apply this into splitting up your study sessions, which I'll cover in my next point. Number four ebb or flow. We all have natural cycles throughout the day of productiveness or slogs. For my boyfriend Josh, it's always a food coma after lunch. The most important thing is that you identify times where you know you can be productive and days where you are free from distractions. For example, do you have days where you can't study? Do you get tired or demotivated after a certain time? Do you find yourself more productive in the morning? How long can you study for before you start procrastinating? I do this really silly thing, and this might be a little bit of oversharing, but after a long working period or a study period where I need a break, or if I'm procrastinating, I will go and do a poop. And you know, a poop might take, you know, five, 10 minutes or so. And even though I'm being productive in the sense that my body is telling me to do something, in actuality, I'm just going because I need a break. And that's just something that I realize uh, a little recently, actually. Do any of you guys experience the same thing? Drop a comment for me so that I know I'm not alone. So by asking yourself these types of questions, you'll give yourself more realistic study times where you can focus on the task at hand without giving yourself excuses not to study. Number five. Prioritize other activities. This might sound super ironic, but giving yourself constraints and having time for other things is going to help you be more productive in the times when you do study. To do this, simply create a realistic schedule for yourself that takes into account your extracurricular activities, social life, and your own preferences for studying. The schedule could be created on a weekly basis where at the beginning of the week, you consider your school timetable, assessments, and extracurricular commitments that are coming up that week. Or you might decide to create a monthly or even semester schedule, depending on how far you like to plan ahead. I'm not studying at school anymore, but in my work, I find that I'm actually more productive when I constrain my time. If I decide to take a Friday off and have a four day work week, I'm generally more productive in those four days because I know I don't have time to dwaddle. However, you want to try and commit to your schedule. There's a caveat to this though. If you do create a schedule, you want to try and stick to it. This might mean missing out on seeing friends or watching TV on only one night of the week if you've booked in a study session. But keep an eye for the next point because your friends can be a part of your study routine. By creating a schedule, whether monthly or weekly, you can view these study sessions as bookings that you're required to attend, encouraging you to study consistently in order to meet your goal. Be aware that your schedule does change over time and it can change week to week. It's natural and it's always a work in progress, so it's important to accept that. And we'll talk about this more in the next point. Six change it up. Identify ways to make your study more fun and more interesting. Are you a social learner? If so, you might prefer to schedule times with friends to study a subject together, which will not only ensure you're supported in your learning, but you have studying booked in, making it a lot harder to cancel your session. You might find it difficult to study on your own if you don't have guidance. Think about whether your school offers an after-school study group or help sessions. This will not only force you to study as there's not much else to do, but teachers will be available for support if you have any questions, both before and after an assessment, which will expand in step seven. On the other hand, you might be more of an individual learner, but you hate studying just by reading and writing. Try to diversify the ways you learn, to visually organize the information, 
Concept maps are great tools to organize and connect your ideas. I'm a visual learner too, and in a previous video, I've talked about the Zettelkasten method, which might be handy for you if you're a visual learner too. So by identifying the ways that you prefer to learn and that you enjoy learning will just naturally help you be more consistent with studying because it just makes it that much more fun. Step seven, the antisocial social. Studying can often feel quite isolating or autonomous, hence the antisocial part of this point. We've spoken about studying with friends, so that's one way to be more social in your studies, but let's take this even further. Ask for feedback from teachers based on your content knowledge or test results in line with your why. Completing an assessment is just the beginning, and even though you may have reached your goal that you set for yourself, think about what might be next. Are there similar assessments that are likely to come up this year, next year, or into the future? If so, it's great to check in with your teacher or even with yourself to see how well you've done and what you could improve on for next time, which might form the basis of a new goal. For example, you might have achieved that B that you were aiming for in English. Congrats! But what next? Maybe you're hoping to get a B plus as a new goal. So what should you do next? Ask your teacher or even your friends for feedback. What did you do well in your latest assessment? What could you have done better? Remember when we were talking about the finer details of things? This is the finer details, but creating goals incrementally to help you get to that bigger picture goal. In this step, you can be social here by asking your teacher and friends for their advice, and then you go back to being antisocial, which is the studying component. Look, I'm not sure. I really wanted to just try and get in the antisocial social because I have a t-shirt of it, and I think it sounds cool. Eight, rejig your calendar. Adjust your study schedule in line with feedback and your experiences with your timetabling. Is there more you could focus on? Have you designated yourself enough time to study over the past week? Did your teacher mention that more time could be spent on a specific component of the assessment when you asked them in step seven? Did you find the length of time you scheduled for studying too much or too little? As we mentioned in step four, would you change anything about your previous study schedule? Would you change anything about your extracurricular activities as we mentioned in step five, next time you create a new schedule? It's always good to reflect on what you have achieved, but it's also important to look at not only how you can improve in your specific subject, but things like your productivity and your studying habits. Studying consistently, to drill this again, is always an evolving process. It's going to mutate and change over time as you get better and better at studying. So this leads me to my final step. Practice and patience are the keys to successful studying. Practice and patience are the keys to success. Continue reviewing your schedule and reflecting on your why in line with your expectations and goals. Studying consistently requires time. It's important not just to make one attempt at a study schedule, realize that it doesn't work for you and then just abandon it, but to continue to understand how you best learn, how much time you need to learn and what you need to learn. A really good example for me is reading books. There are so many videos out there about how to read fast, but for me, Reading fast and being productive in that sense is actually less productive because I just don't take in any of the information that I'm reading. So I'd rather be a slow learner and take my time, but actually process the information and the ideas that are on the page. I find this to be a much more wholesome approach to my studying a new text than to just try to rush through things. So remember, at the end of the day, it comes down to practice, 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 keep improving, improving, improving. Do I look like God? Look at all the, you know, rays around me. And, okay, anyway, I know I'm not God. Just FYI. And remember to be patient, be kind to yourself, and that this is just a process of learning and getting to know yourself better. Don't forget, always start with your why. From there, everything breaks down and makes a lot of sense. If you found this video helpful, then I'll direct you to my playlist, which I think will also be helpful for you. It's my study playlist where I cover things like effective note taking, 10 hacks for t effective time management. So go ahead and watch those if you are hoping to up your game in studies. I'll catch you next time. Bye.